Hi guys, I'm Laurie Vitali, and on this episode of Learning Kitchen, I'm so excited to share with you my Nonna's delicious ribolita, which is soup stew kind of thing. It's it's like minestrone meets pasta fagioli meets papa pomodoro, all three combined. It's got bread in it. It's got veggies. It's absolutely delicious. Every Italian household has their own version of it, and this is my nonna's, so I'm excited to share it with you. The ingredients you'll need are not very fancy ones. You'll need some kale, which in her case would be cavolo nero, but this is the only kale I can get my hands on. Some cabbage. Here, I've got some butternut squash, carrots, celery, onions, all diced. I've got some tomatoes here. Now, you can um, buy whole, a can of whole plum tomatoes peeled and crush them yourself, which is what I did. And then I've got some cannellini beans that I just, it's just a can of cannellini beans that I've rinsed and uh, drained and rinsed. This is a rind of parmigiano, crucial for this recipe. Some garlic and some vegetable stock along with salt and pepper, olive oil, and you're also going to need some bread, which we'll talk about in just a bit. That's it. So good. Such a childhood favorite. This was like baby food for me growing up. So I have an attachment to it and I love the way it makes the kitchen smell once everything's all together. Mm. Big Dutch oven with some olive oil in the bottom. To my olive oil, I'm gonna add the celery, onion, the carrots. It's not that hot yet, but it all warm up together. Now, like I said, every Italian household has their own version of this. Some people start with pancetta at the very bottom. I don't because my nonna never does. She makes hers purely vegetable, purely vegetarian, um, and that's just the way I grew up eating it. She would use pumpkin instead of butternut squash. I, butternut squash is just easier for me to get my hands on. But in the summertime when she makes it, she wouldn't use the squash at all. She'll just add like zucchini and green beans. It just totally depends. But this is kind of the basic and I mostly make it in the colder months because it's really warming. It's just really comforting and I absolutely love it. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt and a grind or two of black pepper. And I'm going to saute my veggies for about 10 minutes or until they cook down and develop some color. These look fantastic. Add in the garlic and that just needs to saute for like a minute or so. As soon as you just add that instantly, that aroma just hits you in the face. It's like the most incredible flavorful punch in the face <laughs> you'll ever have and that you want over and over again. Okay. Ah, let that go for just about a minute. You want that raw garlic flavor to cook out. And then we'll add a few more ingredients. It is kind of, it's, it's making a soup. So you have like layers, you know, you're, you're building those layers of flavors and it's important that you don't skip anything. So let that garlic cook for a minute and then we'll move on. Adding in my stock, which you know that for me, it's just water and soup based just because it makes it easier. But sometimes I use, no, I won't open. Sometimes I use soup base. Ah, there you go. Sometimes I use pre-made stock, homemade stock. It depends on what I have on hand. And this is vegetable stock because like I said, I want to make this just a pure vegetable soup. And then I'm gonna add in my cannellini beans and my crushed tomatoes. There you go. My tomatoes that I crushed. You can also just buy crushed tomatoes if you want. And then the Parmesan rind. There are so many benefits to buying a block or a wedge of parmigiano, the really good kind. One, it tastes phenomenal. And two, you can use the rind. What I do is when I'm pretty much used up the whole uh, wedge and I have just the rind left over, I cut it off or I just take it and put it in a Ziploc bag, throw it in the freezer because you can put the rind of parmigiano in any soup that your heart desires in my Italian potato soup. I always throw it in there because it's delicious. And here it's crucial. So I'm going to throw that in there and let this come to a bubble and let it simmer for about 20 minutes. My soup has been simmering for about 20 minutes. I'm going to take out the Parmesan rind because it's kind of done its job and it's now just kind of falling apart. It's infused. It smells fantastic. It's done. I, at this point, am going to add my kale and my cabbage. You could use one or the other. I like a mixture of both. I absolutely have to have cabbage just because it's, uh, to me, it's a standard. My nonna always put cabbage in it. My mom always put cabbage in it. My Zia's always put cabbage in it. So that's what I'm used to. 
push the grains down. It'll look like you don't have nearly enough liquid, but you do. You just need to push these down. And once they start cooking, they will just really reduce down to hardly anything. And you want this to simmer for another 20 minutes. And then we'll be in the home stretch, fellas. Ladies and fellas, we'll be in the home stretch of eating a delicious, delicious bowl of ribolita. This looks absolutely wonderful. I need to season this with some salt and pepper. It's not too much salt because remember, if you season the vegetables, the stock has some salt in it, and then the parmigiano is also quite salty. So a little pinch of that. You could serve it like this, and it would just be an absolutely gorgeous, delicious veggie soup. My timer's going off on me. But we are going to stick to tradition and add some bread. This is just, I have some Italian crusty bread. All I did, it's a, couple, it's a couple days old, which is perfect. Cut off the crust, cut the pieces in about one inch, one inch pieces or so. Cut the slices in one inch pieces. And I'm gonna add this to my soup. It's not gonna stay, you know, in, in chunks. It's gonna kind of disintegrate throughout the soup, but that's what makes this so delicious. That's how you're supposed to eat this. So now all you're gonna do is make sure you give this a good toss so that the bread is submerged into the soup and let this sit for about five minutes. So I'm going to just turn this off and let it sit for about five minutes and we'll be ready to eat. Look at that. It is time to serve some up and I am beyond excited for this. It smells so just phenomenal. Oh, anything that has bread in it, you know I'm all about. And it's just like soaked up all that lovely soup. Let's give this a go, shall we? Of course, when you serve it, lots of freshly grated parmesan on top. A must. Absolutely a must. It smells so good. The cabbage with the tomato -y soup. Oh, it smells so good. Hot. Mmm. Mmm. That bread melts in your mouth. That slight hint of parmigiano in the background is perfection. It's so transporting. It brings me to tears. I love every single thing about this. But what I love most is how you can really tailor it to what's in season, what you have on hand, what you like, what you're familiar with, flavors that you grew up eating, Ribolita just means reboiled. So really, in any soup, you could put anything your heart desires in it. That's the great thing about soups and stews. It's like, you don't have to worry about if it's one carrot or two carrots. If you want to put pumpkin, put pumpkin. If you want to put butternut squash, put that. If you want to take it out, do. Do whatever your heart desires. Mmm. Mmm. It's hot, but... Absolutely phenomenal. Mmm. I just love it so much. LauraInTheKitchen.com will have the written recipe for you. If you or your family has um, their own version of ribolita, I would love for you to share down below how you like to make it or how you grew up eating it. Thanks for, so much for spending time with me. I'm getting tongue-tied because I want to go back to my soup. <laughs> Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I'll see you next time. Bye.